1978, Michael Myers, who murdered his sister on Halloween 15 years earlier, came back to haunt the town of Haddonfield, Illinois, taking the lives of four people and leaving one person alive to tell the tale. A babysitter named Lori Strode. From David Gordon Green and Universal Pictures comes a film 40 years in the making. He waited for this night. He's waited for me. I've waited for him. Michael Myers is back, and Haddonfield will never be the same. Do you know that I pray every night that he would escape? What the hell do you do that for? So I can kill him. Well, that was a dumb thing to pray for. Shocking. Oh, shit! Terrifying. <laughs> Blood curdling. Will you survive the terror of the shape during the night he came home? Again. Laurie Strode faces down the murderous Michael Myers in... Halloween. Happy Halloween, Michael. You don't believe in a boogeyman? Well, you should. Good evening, psychos and scream queens, and welcome to How to Survive, a show about making it out of your favorite horror movies without getting brutally murdered. I'm Juliette Jolly, and joining me as always is our other horror host, Kate Mancini. Stab that like button down below if you think you will survive. Tonight we're gonna see just how hard it is to make it out of Halloween alive. Halloween 2018. Ah, ah scary. Michael Myers. What do you think of Halloween 2018? Uh, I think it's very interesting doing, uh, it really started the, the legacy sequel trend that we've been going through now with yes. the, being a direct sequel to the first thing, which makes this what, like the third or fourth timeline mm -hmm. for these fucking movies? Yeah. This is also like, I think this is like the first horror movie to do that because Force Awakens had done something kind of similar and then a couple of other movies had done some like similar Actually, stuff. Actually, technically, technically, on a technicality, mm -hmm. uh, the Evil Dead remake is a legacy sequel to the original. Well, it doesn't fucking make much sense in that case because no, different cabin. So it's the same cabin. Uh, doesn't look the same. Look different. Book. It looks exactly the same. Where's Ash? Oh right, he is he actually died. in the film at the very end. He's in a black void waiting for us <laughs> to show up so he can <laughs> so talk true. to us. Well, no, it's supposed to be like at, you know, Evil Dead One happens and he dies at the end of that movie. Oh, so oh, like I got you. So he doesn't. That's wait. why. That's why his car is still there. Oh, so in, he's like, actually that shit. after credit scene is him in hell after the first movie when he fucking yep, died. and hell is groovy to him. He thinks hell is groovy, baby, just like Michael Myers, okay. our killer I'm glad of the you week. said that because I was gonna ask. <laughs> so anyone who listened to the last episode knows that we spent a lot of it talking about Fat Bastard and Goldmember for some reason. A little bit of Dr. Evil, I think, was sprinkled in there. And I was gonna ask, since the killer in the Halloween franchise is named Michael Myers, am I allowed to reference Austin Powers throughout this video? How about no. Uh, but anyway, let's move on because this is this is going to be a long one. <laughs> this but, is going to be um, very long. In terms yeah. of this being a legacy sequel, it's it's very interesting because this was a passion project made by Danny McBride and David Gordon Green, mm -hmm. and they wanted to kind of streamline and do a return to form for the Halloween series that it hasn't really seen since the original. Uh, and they did that by removing the Lori being Michael's sister twist that sucks fucking shit ass butt. Yeah, so my favorite part of the Halloween franchise is that Lori is Michael's sister, so I was very disappointed in this film. <laughs> no, I think, yeah, I think they made the right call. It's a very, I feel like, and we'll get into it in Kills, I feel like it's it makes it- It's very fan service but I, I don't think it's overbearing in a way that another certain movie will be. Yeah, I think, I think in Kills it gets a little weird, but for the most part it works, and I think it was the right call, because there's just so much, like, lore and shit that's not necessary in those later movies. I haven't seen all the later movies, but all that lore and stuff that it gets into, it just mm -hmm. is very unnecessary and it felt like you're not gonna, I, they don't even have, they didn't even originally have like one timeline. So I think it makes sense it, to just go one It's not even unprecedented because they literally did a similar thing with H20 or H2O where they removed all the movies except the first two, so. Right, yeah, yeah. so I, I think. Plus, I think this it was one, a good call. The guy's got peanut butter on his penis. Yeah, 
yeah, so there's a guy who gets peanut butter on his penis, and then Michael licks it I off. I have peanut butter on my penis. My creepiest moment is when Michael licked the peanut butter off that guy's penis. <laughs> the guy actually died because he was allergic to the peanut butter. That's our first kill. Is the our peanut first butter kill penis. is the guy who licked peanut butter off his own penis and died. Oh, on his own? He he sucks himself off. Michael removed his ribs so he could suck his own dick. I love that he's he's what is he doing? He's setting up traps for rats. What? And then oh yeah, he's I, setting I, up traps for rats, and then one goes off and he goes, ah, I got peanut butter on my penis. I was so enveloped in my own reality. I was inventing of this new movie where he licks peanut butter off his own penis that I was perplexed as to what you were talking about. Oh, you forgot that I in forgot the, movie, the real the guy thing. literally goes, I got peanut butter. No, on no, my no. Penis. I knew that, but I forgot what the reality of why he says that was. I thought it was uh, actually so Michael would lick it off and then he ended up dying. No, it is. That's that's what happens. Oh, OK. Well, that's my favorite part of the movie. Anyway, we should probably get into the kill. Yeah, <laughs> let's get to the kill. What's this fucking movie about? Oh, my God. Well, fucking 100 years after <laughs> Halloween 1974, or whenever the first one came out, 40. Michael's been in jail for the past 90 years, and He's been in now he hasn't said shit. But now there's some podcasters, and they want him to talk. So they go, and they try to get him to talk, but he doesn't say anything. No, he doesn't. Title card. Title. He card. does. He does not say anything. Don't say an Austin Powers quote to me because I'll know it's from Austin Powers and not this movie. They go, say something, and he goes, Yeah, baby, yeah. Dun 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 dun. dun. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> that is true. That is what happens. Michael is being moved to a new prison. He escapes and then he wrecks fucking havoc on Haddonfield once more. And Lori does some shit too. So. And the guy gets peanut butter. On his penis. And Michael sucks penis that has peanut butter all over it, and he says it tastes good. So, uh, in case you're new here, which you probably are, uh, we have a rating system on these kills, which are one, two, five bones. One bone, you're dead. Two bones, you're unlikely to survive. Three bones is a 50-50 chance. Four bones, it's easy to survive, but still a chance of death. And five bones, if you die, you are the dumbest person in the world. And we hate you, and whoa, we fucking, we're, we're glad you died. Fuck. And you're stupid. So our first kill uh, happens a little ways into the movie after the bus crashes, which is a character named Lumpy who's a little boy. No, no. Well, the first kill, I'm, I counted the first kill as Lumpy's dad because he canonically dies oh, first. Oh, Lumpy's dad? Yeah. He's, he's played by Breen Gregory and he's, his body's shown later. He's killed off screen with a neck snap. My way of surviving that is drive away. Yeah, I have drive the away. same one. And don't, get don't get out, out of the, the car. car. Just keep... My, I have two. Don't get out of the car and keep driving. My my ass would say like you know fuck that. I'm driving. I have my kid in the car, right? I yep, see the sanitarium car. bus crash and there's mentally ill escapees yeah. in the road. And listen, I'm driving away. No mess. No offense to the mentally ill, but I'm driving. Bye. I'm not helping you motherfuckers out. I don't give a shit. Fuck the mentally ill. I take that back. I'll call the cops. But I'm driving. I, exactly. That's the thing. Is like most I'll do is call the police. The thing, he gets it. out and he says like oh I gotta make sure everyone's okay. It's like don't be a hero. Just fucking get out of there. I, Call the police, say, hey, there's a big crash, but I, I my kid's in the car, that's and I don't want him to fucking die. Yep, yep, yeah, five, five for me. That's a fiver. If you die, you're stupid, and yeah. he's a fucking idiot. Yep, lumpy. So our second kill is Lumpy, uh, the best character ever because he wants to dance instead of hunt. He just wants he to dance. A, he has a big dream. He just wants to dance. He loves his dad and he wants to spend time with him on the weekends, but he wants to dance. I have... He's played by Vince Mattis and he dies with Michael slamming his head against the window because he was hiding in the backseat of the Michael car. Michael slams a lot of motherfuckers into shit in this movie and it's it's really <laughs> That's scary. That's his main method. It's fucked up. I don't like it. It's really it's like... It's crazy that the iconography is is that he has a knife when honestly he just have, just have big hands it's scarier too cause like a knife is like oh I'm stabbed but he like smashes people into shit and it's like oh my god I, like this is scary I don't like it <laughs> one of my ways to survive this death is don't get out of the car what's, the, what's one of yours well here's the thing mine is also don't get out of the car and I guess have more awareness getting back to the car uh, yeah my other one is check the back seat but he's getting out cause his dad was stupid yes right? that, here's the thing he's probably 100%. Stop being stupid. He has a gun. Yes. Too. And he runs back to the car because he accidentally shot a man. He's honestly, in, he's way smarter than his dad. His dad got him killed. Yeah. This is a one bone for me. I have this it kid as, did nothing wrong. I have it as two because I think if Mike, if he hadn't gotten out of the car, there's a possibility that Michael wouldn't have gotten in. No, I, there's a possibility though that if he sat in the car, Mike would just get in the back seat. Mike and kill him. Yeah, baby. Yeah. No. Um. A 
anyways, I, I'm honestly, I am fine giving this a one because, like, I do think, like... His dad got him killed. Yeah, this is a one. Sorry. Fuck Lumpy's dad. We've decided that off-screen kills, if there's no real context leading up to them, that's a one kill. That's, that's a god, aka the writer, is deciding, okay, you're, you're dead now. There's no way for us to know if you could have or could have not survived that. So, with this bus crash, there are three deaths, which are two cops and a bus driver. Um, the bus driver was probably killed by Dr. Sartain, which we'll get into a little later. Yes, we'll but get to that. But those are all one bone. So when we tally them up and average them out at the end, those are the deadest people were thrown in there. Yeah. A little later, the next morning or whatever, the two podcasters are at a gas station and speeding through a little a couple more off-screen deaths, there is a mechanic who we do see uh, getting beaten to death in the background, but we have no real context and is also like out of focus. Yeah. As well as the gas station clerk having his jaw ripped open between shots. Mm -hmm. We can assume that Michael killed him, but we cannot rule out that he was really shocked by something. <laughs> or he saw a really hot woman. Or he saw a really sexy lady and he had to go out. Or he saw sexy Austin Powers. We cannot rule Mike out Myers. that Austin Powers started doing a sexy dance and then that caused his jaw to drop and it tear off. And then Michael Myers said, I love gold. That doesn't even make sense. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Say something. I love gold. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, so our next kill is Aaron Corey, played by Jefferson Hall. He's one of the podcasters. And he dies from his head being smashed against a wall and bathroom stall over and over. Again, another smashing kill. I, I have one way to survive this, and it's don't save your friend. Unfortunate, uh, I think it's very noble of him to try and save his friend. But Here's the thing with that, mm -hmm. because I think, yeah, he's being a hero, right? I want to save my girlfriend, uh, whatever. But he does bring a crowbar, which under normal circumstances would knock out an old man. He swings that full force to hit Michael on face because Michael is a force of nature. I really think so, he did nothing wrong, but I still think that like, I mean... <sighs> yeah, I, I think he knows Michael's around. He saw mm -hmm. two dead bodies. He could just bail. He could. Well, do you have any other ways to survive this? Because I feel like that's the only way. I mean, Bring a bazooka? I mean, I don't know. I have this one at three bones. Same. I have it at three. It's like, I like, okay. he could have just bailed, and but also like, why, why would he? But also he really could have just turned around. Which leads into our next kill, which is his girlfriend, uh, Dana Haynes, mm -hmm. who's played by uh, Rian Rees, and she dies. Uh, she gets her neck snapped by Michael Myers. Yeah. What is your one way? Oh, okay. First off, let me just say, nasty kill because the whole time she's hiding and trying to get away from him, she has a poopy butt. Yeah, uh, she does not get to wipe her ass, so there is poop <laughs> in her butt the entire time that she's there, being chased yeah. by Michael. But my way to survive for that one, I have I have a couple, mm -hmm. which is, uh, the main one is, your boyfriend is getting murdered. Escape during that. She yeah, kind of just stays there. A, uh, she does get a, like a split second where he is, um, Michael's throwing her boyfriend like into the wall. Th there's the second where she could get away, and that is my one way to get away is make a run for it. It's not a huge opportunity, but it's still an opportunity, you know? Yeah. Uh, she goes for the crowbar instead of running, and I feel like, just run. Like My uh, my main way of surviving this is don't don't go poop in a public gas station bathroom. Yeah, don't shit in a gas station. She, she gets there and goes, I need to go do a number two almost immediately. There's an almost in that sentence, mm -hmm. so hold it, I think. So I have this at a two because she does get that chance, but it's pretty slim and also so besides that, she's so, fucked. So, yeah, this two for me yep. as well. So our next kill is in Michael's long take that he has, mm -hmm. where he goes through the streets of Haddonfield. He kills a character who the wiki names Gina Pancella, uh, but is credited as Sandwich Woman, played by Marion Green. Uh, and she is uh, off screen beaten to death with a hammer. Yeah, Marion Green is David Gordon Green's wife. She's in it as a cameo. Uh, very cute, <laughs> very fun stuff. Uh, I have uh, one way to survive this, and uh, I put down the note, nothing, because there's <laughs> no way to survive this okay. as a one. Like, it without a doubt. It is on the doubt. news in the world that Michael Myers is free. Lock your door! Yeah. Lock your doors. That's true, but does she... This is, is it even before like a, the news report in Halloween Kills, so, like, the entire town doesn't know. But, like, literally a minute later, a lady gets a call about Michael and goes, oh, I better lock my doors. Yeah, but you don't... So it's in the air. We don't know Sandwich Girl got a call, so maybe she should have locked her door, but I, we don't even know she knows about Michael. So this is a one. But also, in, in Halloween Kills, in the next 
Nights film. Yes. This is kind of cheating, but yes. the original 1978 night is like their 9-11 because they're going crazy about it. Okay, but even on 9-11, So the people, whole town honestly not, should be on high alert and have sanctions in place But ever that's not even how that 9-11 works. It's not like people are like, don't go in a tall building on 9-11. You never know. It's just kind no, of no, like no, a stay of remembrance. No, 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 but there's still sanctions in place. The thing is, Michael wasn't executed. He was put back into a mental institution, and that first movie starts with him escaping a mental institution, and which he does again. So, like, I feel like there should be some sanctions in place. Uh, well, there aren't, and the lady didn't know, so it's a one. It's a one? A one. Here's the thing. I am a very paranoid person in the real world. I am locking on my doors. This is a two for me. It's a one. That's ridiculous. It's a one. Fine. This is a one. Thank you. Next kill is Trick or Treat Lady, a.k.a. Also known as Andrea Wagner, according to the wiki again, played by Marion Singh, uh, who is stabbed to the back of the mm -hmm. neck. And that is, of course, Miranda Singh's mother. That's not true. That is real. Tell me how you survived this. Let me know. Same as the other one. Lock your fucking doors. Okay, well, I also have the same as the other one. Nothing. Very unfortunate timing with her phone call because she was about to lock. She was doors. about to lock her door, so it's a one. But also, why is your back door unlocked? Because she's not a she's a fearless woman who's not afraid of Michael Myers, even if she's staring him in the face. Should be. Well, Should be. it's a one. It's a one. All right, it's a one. Next fucking kill. <laughs> Next kill is Vicky, played by Virginia Gardner. She is stabbed with a knife after checking the closet of the child that she's babysitting. Yes. What's your way of surviving Believe this? the kid. He's telling you there's a monster in his room. Listen to him. He's terrified. This is not like a case of he is just like, oh, I'm just scared. He's telling you there's a man in my closet. Believe him. One of my ways is the kid, Julian, did say it. He said, let Dave go first. Then Dave would check the room and then die yeah. instead of her. But I think you're giving her a little too much stank because I don't think, even if she did believe him, right? Mm -hmm. Honestly, it's Halloween. It's a child. Okay. I, why would you believe a child, right? If you were there, would you be like, oh my God, there's a guy. I, if a kid said, hey, there's someone in my room, I'd at least be a little cautious. I feel like a little bit of reverence okay, But she in walked in, clearly thought there was no guy, and then did a bit, right? Mm -hmm. She didn't actually check. But I think even if she did actually check, she still would have died anyway. I don't, if she had like fully taken the kid's word for it and opened that door like super caught like really like oh there might be someone behind here i feel like no, she could michael like, would bum rush no, her he, she could run I, I this is a three for me wow this is okay here's the thing okay she i don't think she did anything wrong because she got stabbed once right okay and then she's running and she michael slips. can only walk yeah. but fucking apparently an act of god made her die because she slips inexplicably on the floor because she's wearing socks so honestly the real way to survive this is i guess don't wear socks or run different she was even so too, unlike her boyfriend. Mm -hmm. This is a one for me. A one? An act, literally an act of God made her die. Literally, if she didn't slip, she'd be gone. She'd be home free. She would be fine. I, that is, okay, I'm willing to go down to a two because it is crazy that she slips on the socks. Like, that's ridiculous. Really? But I still feel like, I, I, I think if she hadn't just been like, oh, whatever, there's nothing in the closet, she could have, like, gotten the chance to run away. Maybe she still would have well, slipped. The thing is, that little kid is fucking stupid stupid because he believed her that no one was there. Yeah. If he was adamant of like, no, there's a real life man in here, I think she'd be like, oh shit, there's a real life man That's in here. true. I don't know why he, he like, he really screwed her over by being like, it's the boogeyman. Mm -hmm. No, it's a it's a guy with a knife yep. in a in the closet. Okay, you, fine. This is a one because that fucking kid This is a one. Her. Act of God. This fucking dumbass kid. It's not the boogeyman. It's a guy with a mask <laughs> being scary. This is a one. This is a one. Our next kill is Dave, her boyfriend, played by Miles Robbins, who is off screen stabbed in the neck. Yeah. Uh, what's your way of surviving this one? This is, this kill is ridiculous to me. This is, don't, <laughs> don't, what are you doing? Don't go upstairs. <laughs> don't grab the knife. Don't be a hero. Don't try and kill Michael Myers. He hurt, she stopped screaming. She died. I get if you went to like <laughs> save her, but she stopped screaming because he kills her. And then he's like, fuck this. What do you mean, fuck this? What does that mean? He grabs a fucking dainty ass knife and then runs and then it clearly doesn't work out for him. The kid even warns him, if you go up there, you're gonna die. And he was right. Fucking dipshit. This is a five and I don't even want to hear anything else about it. 
<laughs> Literally. Leave. Leave. What, like, Leave. he is fully dead before he grabs a knife, first off. But also, he is insanely hot. Yeah. Fuck Dave. Fuck Dave. Fuck Dave and his fucking stupid ass. Fucking idiot. Our next kill is Oscar Berlucci, who is played by Drew Sheed, who is stabbed in the back by Michael and then impaled through the chin on a spiked fence. Mm -hmm. What's your way of, of getting through this one? <sighs> when a guy is being really weird, leave. Don't, don't hang out and talk to him about a girl that you have a crush on and then when you realize he's being weird, go, you're being weird. Leave. Here's the thing. I think Michael was doing a bit because if he was leaving, Michael's chasing. He's on chase mode. Right. I think but even I if think he left. He doesn't even try. The thing is, the guy, he, Michael's being weird and he is like not picking up on it. And then he starts to pick up on it. And instead of leaving, he's like, man, you're being weird. Yeah, leave, dude. <laughs> My way is uh, don't be a nice guy. Don't be what like the... Oh, you deserve so much better. And then yeah. kid try, like kissing her because literally if he didn't do that, if he wasn't like that, he would have left there with Allison or dealt with Michael together with Allison. Yes. Loser. That is a good, yeah, that is a very good point. Don't try and kiss this girl uh, and be weird. Don't be weird. Don't be weird. Literally, even as she's walking away, he's even like adding on like, what the fuck? Yeah. yeah I was, I was chubbed out, Allison. My dick was at half the, mass. I, the girls got me, got me really horny. Crazy. Great. Right. Insane. Saying. Crazy. Ridiculous. What's your bones? I have this at, okay, so here's the thing. I think, fuck Oscar, he's a loser, and also he should have ran away. It's entirely his fault, but like, once he's there, it's like, what is he gonna do? I have it at a four. A four? I have it at, at, at a three. As It's 50-50 because I really, I genuinely can't think of any way to get through this other than being better at climbing a fence. That's true. He Well, he also doesn't really try at a certain point. He starts yelling for help, and it's like, maybe expend that energy not with your throat and with your arms. Yeah. I feel like he could have climbed over that fence if he tried, if he really gave it his all. I don't know. I He's a little, I, maybe I'm being mean. He's a little out of shape. That's true. Allison is pissed off and climbing it out of spite when she climbs it easily, so. Let's say, can we give it a four because he's a weird Reddit guy who tries to get pussy and it's awkward? <sighs> but once he realizes he's in danger, Michael is one centimeter away from him. He's already been stabbed. That's true, but he almost gets over that. He could have gotten over that gate, but he really just kind of Gives Wait, up. if his cape got caught, that's not a four. That's a three. It's fine. It's a three. It's a four. But it's a three. It's a four. All right. Next kill. Uh, next kill. If you're in 2018, you'd think the next kill would be Officer Hawkins, uh, which it's not. It is not. Because he's alive. Because he survives. That's why the next film is called Halloween Survives. I do think it's very funny that Dr. Sartain's little pen knife thing, mm -hmm. it's like a Mission Impossible gadget. Literally, it. how does that even function? How does that pen, how does that knife? I fit in there in the ballpoint pack. I don't know, so I can't answer. He's a that. little spy. He's a little freak. He's a little spy. He's a little freak. He's a weirdo. <laughs> what the hell is he and doing here? He's also our next kill, which is Dr. Sartain, played by Haluk uh, Bilginer. Bilgen I'm butchering this fucking name, but he gets his head stomped by Mike. After he lets him out of the cop car. What's your way? Don't let him out of the cop car. Don't don't let him out of the cop car. He lets Michael out. He doesn't let Michael out. Yeah, he does. He kills the cop so he can put the mask on. Okay, but in, in his situation, right, he's driving Michael, and then Michael crushes his head, or, like, tries to crush him, right? Mm -hmm. He gets out, Michael stomps his head. How are you surviving? If you're already in there driving, right? You're driving Michael. Mm -hmm. How are you living? I don't know. Don't let him out of the car. He lets him out. I, he wants to my way ask. is roll. He really is, like, accepting this, this head stomp. He just goes, say something, and Michael goes... Right. He goes, how about no? And stomps his head. Literally roll. Uh, don't be weird. I don't know. Move. Mm -hmm. What's what's your what's your bones for this one? I don't know. What what's your what is your bones? Mine is a three. Uh, don't be evil. But I feel like in that specific situation, there's a 50-50 chance. I feel like it's his dying. fault. He fucking kills the cop. He gets himself in this situation. I feel like it's a four for being evil. A four for being evil. It's a four for being evil. He gets himself put in that situation. Wow. Wow. <laughs> okay, I guess it's a it's four. It's a four for evil. So our next two kills, which are both off screen, so they're one bone, are Officer Richard, who is played by actual police officer and law enforcement technical advisor Charlie Benton, who gets stabbed in the head, and Officer Francis, who is the makeup effects designer Christopher Allen Nelson, who gets decapitated and his head is like hollowed out and put on the tip of a shotgun. Crazy deaths. Mm -hmm. One bone, I guess. 
So our, our final kill is Ray Nelson, mm -hmm. played by Toby Huss, who is in your favorite movie, Cop Shop. No, I as don't your like that. I can't believe you're guy. actually bringing this up. I don't like the film Cop Shop. <laughs> she said earlier that when we recorded, she was going to talk about me liking Cop Shop. I don't like Cop Shop. You love Cop I Shop. I liked Cop Shop like 1% more than you did. You told me, go watch Cop Shop. You give it five stars. You give it five That's stars. That's gaslighting. And I, I had to embarrassingly go to the theater and go, one ticket for Cop Shop. Please. Five stars is not. And then real. I went in and it's sucked. Did I give it five stars? Fuck cop shop. Did I actually give it five stars? You literally gave it five stars. You're like, it's fucking awesome. I love cop shop. And I got in and I was texting him like snooze. <sighs> Boring. I wish there was like, I wish we did face cam because my I'm so puzzled right now. I don't think I gave it five stars. <laughs> I think that's a lie. I know you gave it five stars. You, that's why I went to go see. That's why I went out of my way to go see cop shop. I don't think that's real. But if it was, I'm glad because it you loved forced it. you to watch cop shop. And then I'm shop. like, oh, this guy's annoying. And you, you text me, this guy's awesome. And that guy is Toby Huss. Listen, the guy Peanut is butter on his penis. Uh, the guy is cool in the movie. I think he's funny, but I didn't love Cop Shop. And I didn't give it five stars. That's a lot. It's real. And also... He had and he has peanut butter on his penis. on his penis. What's your one of your ways to survive this? Oh, day? Uh, also he gets strangled, yeah, yeah, he gets strangled to death by wind, wind chimes. chimes until his um, neck it's not a yo-yo like Juliet said. I thought it was no, a yo-yo. No, it's wind chimes that he walks past as he's intelligently Listen, walking right out of the scene, house. Right before the scene, playing with a yo-yo. Uh, I thought it was a yo-yo. It was not a yo-yo. My way to survive it is, I guess, be aware of your surroundings. My way is stay inside. He goes outside. He definitely stay inside. But I think once he steps foot outside that house, unavoidable. Oh, yeah, dead. but he shouldn't have gone outside. There's no reason for him to go outside. The, it's, it's, he's in a fucking safe place, and then he's just like, let me go ask these cops some questions. No, stay inside, dude. To be fair, if you're being protected by police officers and they pulled up and they're not getting out of the car, would you go outside to be like, hey, what the fuck is going on? Or would you be like, nope, that guy's head got flayed and stabbed in the, guy, guy stabbed in the head. Uh, if they mysteriously rolled up and didn't get out, I would like knock on the window and try to get their attention and be like, hey, guys, you are you good? Uh, what's going on? I'd start, I'd be like Taylor Swift. I'd like have like signs and I'd be holding it up like everything okay? And then have them what? respond. Uh, but if they didn't, like Taylor he, Swift? you know, in the uh, in that music video where she uh, is talking to her crush and he's across the window and they're communicating through large note cards. What's that one movie where the Walking Dead guy has the signs and he, can he not talk or he just um, doesn't what, want what Walking Dead the, guy? The guy who plays Rick from The Walking Dead. Love he's Actually. Love Actually. I don't, I haven't seen it, but I know he's in Love Actually. Would you love actually signal to yes, the cops? Yes, I would love actually signal to the cops. Would you have five different signs in the go? Are you good? Is Michael out there? Yes, I would do that. I would make it happen. What's your bones for this Fucking, one? Fucking, it's a four. Once he goes outside, he's dead, but don't go outside. Don't go outside, Ray, you idiot. It's, it's a, a four? four? And it's ridiculous that he leaves that house. What? I can't believe you're not with me on this. It's ridiculous he doesn't He doesn't stay inside. He's Michael's on the loose. You are going to give Sandwich Woman and Trigger he Treat lady. On his penis. What, were you, what were you gonna give them? Fives because they didn't lock their door? And now Ray, oh Ray, oh but Ray, he doesn't know any better. He knows better. He knows better. His his he, thinks he knows he's Lori. Safe. He knows There's Lori. Po police officer. He knows Lori. And Lori is the most paranoid of Michael in the franchise, and he doesn't listen to her. He should have listened. If okay, let's say you married a woman, right? I married a and woman. that woman went. Mm -hmm. I had a very abusive mother that ruined my child. Okay. And then a serial killer stopped to you and you had to stay at your mother-in-law's place. Mm -hmm. Would you listen to that woman or would you go fuck you out of spite and do the okay. opposite of what she says? The 9-11 of serial killers is happening right now in terms of it's the anniversary <laughs> and uh, it's a scary thing that happened in this town and that guy escaped 30 years later. Um, are you going to go prance outside and be like, hi cops, but how's it going? it's not the 9-11 of serial killers. It's, he just killed three people in, in like the 70s. You said this earlier. You said, I'm flipping what you Said. Listen, in kills, I said in kills. No, no, no. You said they sandwich treat it lady. like it's 9 /11. You said but in this movie, in this movie, literally, Dave is like, because it's, Dave, because it's Dave the 9 11 like, of serial shit? killers, but now when it's Ray, <laughs> oh, we should just walk outside and do front listen, flips. Listen, Fuck Ray. Listen, Fuck if, Ray. I listen, hate him and I listen. hate Cop Shop and I hate him in Cop Shop in this because he's an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> he's very good in this movie, oh my, but he's Okay, if in the real world, right? In the real world, real right? World. I, I married a woman who had an abusive mm -hmm. mother, and she was very yep. terrified of John Wayne Gacy. And then John Wayne Gacy escaped. I, and the cops rolled up in front of my house. I would go, hey, is everything chill, police officers? Nope, nope not stepping outside of that house. 
if the cops Dude, I don't are give inside, a fuck about John Wayne if the Gacy. cops are inside, unless he's dressed as a clown, I don't give a fuck. No, ridiculous is a four. I'm gonna bump it to five. You say one more word. I swear to God. It's a three. It's a five. It's a three. I think once he's outside, there's a little bit of a... Not really. Once he's outside, he's just Honestly, dead. No, Literally, he could have shot like, Michael. Oh, hey, police officer. He had a oh. gun. Yeah, but he got attacked from behind. But he could have like, been like, what's going... Oh, this is... There's a scary situation I'm in, clearly. Let me turn around for a second. He's an idiot and a loser. He's, he's trying to process the fact that he he's like... He, I to the D to the I to the O to the T. It's confusing to be like, is that guy's head hollowed out? I to the D to the I to the O to the T. Fuck Ray. This is a five. This is not a fucking this is a five. five. You are this out is of a your five mind. And I hate him. You are out. I'll, highest I'll go is four. Highest I'll go is four. It's a four. It's a four. And that, ladies and gentlemen, Sorry, is Ray. how you get this is, your this way. This is Katie compensating for her love for you and No, Cop that's not favorite. true. I don't love you and Cop Shop. You're, you seem like a good actor and a probably normal guy, but I don't love you and Cop Shop because I don't love anything about Cop Shop. I didn't give it five stars. That is a Listen. lie. And if it's true, then I did it as a prank to trick her into seeing the movie. He was inhibited by his peanut butter on his penis. So it's slower, actually. Fuck this movie. Is that all that our is kills? all of our kills. At the end of these, we do a little conclusion with most survivable, least survivable, average survivability, and creepiest moment. So uh, most survivable, is it Dave or Lumpy's oh, dad? Oh, shit. Hmm. Here's the thing. Dave is fucking Lumpy's stupid. Lumpy's dad is- Lumpy's dad also that's what got I was his son killed. I think Dave's, in reality, because Lumpy, to be fair, Lumpy's dad is in like the middle of nowhere. So it's like Dave could just run away into like the safety of other fucking people's houses or whatever the fuck. Uh, but Lumpy's dad is in the middle of nowhere, but also at the same time, fuck Lumpy's dad and his fucking stupid, like, he's a piece of shit. I hate him. So I'm- I feel like Lumpy's dad makes more sense, or makes less sense because Dave, he's going to save his girlfriend. Who the fuck is Lumpy's That's dad true. going to Just save? That's true. Just some fucking cop. Fuck Lumpy's dad. It's Lumpy's dad. Fuck Lumpy's dad. So, uh, what's your least survival? Uh, what is our least- I get- I mean, I think it's the- I think it's- Mine was Vicky until you said, no, actually, she should have died. Um, I didn't- no, didn't say that. <laughs> I think it's Sandwich Woman and Trick or Treat Lady because I think it's a tie between them because no, no kid telling them about the boogeyman, nothing. He just sneaks up on, like, there's nothing they could do. It's actually the least survival is Ray. The least survivable he had peanut butter on his penis. is Ray because he put peanut butter on his penis and he knew that would, he knew Michael Myers would smell the peanut butter on his penis and that would lead him right to him. So it's a tie between the two of the I women. think it's a tie between those two because the, they just okay, I can do that indication. So uh, tell it up all the kills. So... The average survivability of this movie would be two bones unlikely to survive. Yeah, um, this you're probably encounter. dead. Michael, he's a force of nature. And Michael Myers, he's groovy, baby. We also pick our creepiest moment from the movie. Yeah. So what's your creepiest? I, so my creepiest moment, once again, is not a creepy moment. It's a cool, it's my favorite moment in the movie. And it's when Judy Greer pretends she's really scared of Michael. And then she says, gotcha, and shoots him. The awesome moment. Fucking cool as shit. My is that cooler moment. or less cool than when it then zooms onto a spotlight onto Lori's face and she goes, happy Halloween, Michael. Less, uh, that's cooler. That's cooler. And then stabs him. It's cooler when Judy Greer says, got you. Wow. Sorry. So my creepiest moment is actually a creepy moment, which kind of creeped me out while I was watching it, which is uh, the suburb spree kill where bitches don't be locking their fucking doors. Yeah. It's scary. I don't ever want to live in the suburbs, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. It's terrifying. Lock your doors. Yeah, lock your doors and don't get killed by Michael Myers. Don't get killed by Michael Myers. Don't get killed. What if I want to? I don't give a shit. Do you want What if I want to ask if he <laughs> was a gold member? I got to take a shit. <laughs> Have a little clip of Michael Myers right there. Uh, so it looks like Michael's saying that he's got to take a shit. Oh my God. Can you do a little edit where he says that as he's walking into the bathroom? I got to oh. take a shit. Get out of the stall. I got to shit. I'm in here. I'm in I'm here. here. No. No. <laughs> no. No. I have to use the shit. I have got the shit. Also take these Jeez. I have to shit in three toilets at once, so that's why I can't use the other one. I had to shit so bad I stole this guy's teeth. I'm wearing a Michael Myers disguise so I can shit. <laughs> Get out of the stall, I need to shit. Get out. Oh, uh, hey, Michael, who the fuck are you? Who are you? I got to shit. <laughs> 
That's why he kills him. It's because he washes him shit while standing outside the stall. Yep. And she has a poopy butt. And a guy gets the peanut butter on his penis. The, two characteristics that are also found in Fat Bastard. <laughs> he does not get peanut butter on his penis. He rubs chicken wings on his tits. You can assume there's peanut butter on that wing. Why would there be peanut butter on his penis? I don't know. He probably there's fucked There's peanut the, butter on my penis. He's probably horny and he fucked a peanut butter jar. And then he probably ate out of it no, later, too. No, he can't even see it because he said it's... it's declared legally dead. No, but he still fucks. You know he fucks. He does ass stuff. He does ass stuff. He doesn't do solely ass stuff. He does. She, remember Felicity Shagwell puts the thing in his ass and goes, oh, getting a little frisky all the way. But that implies, okay, him saying that he that she's getting a little frisky implies that that's like, a, that's like, a, he's, he's into it, but it's a little out of the ordinary, you know? He's not always doing stuff up his asshole, but sometimes if it happens, get a little frisky. Okay, but it's not common. So you're saying he does put peanut. You're, you're saying it's more common for him to apply peanut butter to his penis than to do ass stuff. Yeah, you know, I mean, maybe the reason it's <laughs> dead is because he's allergic to peanuts, but he can't stop fucking the peanut butter jar. Ew. I mean, I'm just saying the facts. I got to fuck the I peanut gotta butter fuck jar. The peanut butter jar. Okay, this is getting nasty. I <laughs> Let's got to trail. take a shit in a peanut butter jar that I fucked. Ew. <laughs> Anyway, anyway, nasty. This, <laughs> so anyway, this was How to Survive, a show we do on new releases, old releases, and everything in between. Subscribe and hit that little bell icon if you don't want to miss any survival guides. And if you want to access these episodes early, you can see them at patreon.com slash this is really creepy, where you can also get bonus content and uncensored episodes on gore movies we cover since YouTube doesn't like blood very much. Yep, so. What's your favorite scary movie? Tell us down below and we might cover that next. My name is Juliet Jolly. And I'm Kate Mancini. And we We'll see you next time, unless Michael Myers gets to you first. Stay safe, you guys. Good night. I got peanut butter on my penis. 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 I got peanut butter on my penis.